Marilyn Manson, welcome to Stop Music. Thank you. Uh, Hollywood and the Shadow of the Valley of Death, your new album due out in November. Can you uh, take us through the recording of the record and how it's differed from your previous releases? Um, this record uh, was an important transformation because uh, I was faced with a choice of uh, how I wanted to respond to the media and at the end of 99 with being blamed for things like Columbine so mm -hmm. a lot of rage but uh, I, I took the time to the time away from the media for three months to really focus that and put that into the album so three months were spent of me by myself writing ideas and, and lyrics and then I got together with the band and we recorded uh, and wrote most of it in my home where the Stones mm. ha had lived at one point and wrote Let It Bleed and, uh, and we finished up in a, in a mansion that Harry Houdini used to live in and uh, mixed it and here we are today. Mm. How did those, um, those particular uh, influences affect things? I mean when you say the Stones, were, they were living there when they recorded Let It Bleed. Um, why did that interest you, wanting to live in that house? Was there any particular reason or you just hear about it and thought? Well, I liked the, the house, you know, because I was looking to, to move to somewhere. And uh, when I found that out, it happened to be my favorite uh, record of theirs. Right. And I also s was examining a lot of parallels between 99 and 69, since yeah. I was born in 69. and. Let It Bleed was the album that uh, kind of represented Altamont and that ended the 60s, mm -hmm. you know, in the same way that Woodstock 99 ended. And uh, Columbine, to me, was exploited in the same way the Manson murders were. Yeah. So a lot of these parallels started to come up, as well as the, the White Album, you know, became a great inspiration mm -hmm. because uh, John Lennon uh, was very much uh, into the idea of revolution, which was what I'm speaking about a lot on the record, and the fact that, you know, not only did he write Happiness as a Warm Gun and how that relates to, you know, his death, um, the fact that he wrote Helter Skelter and that was written in blood on the wall of mm -hmm. a crime scene, the White Album became a record much like Let It Bleed that was associated and blamed for violence. So these became things that I could relate to, so they became inspirational. When, when writing mine. Yeah, it's, it's a real, um, really relentless uh, record. I heard it this afternoon. Very uncompromising. Um, was that was the intention for it to have that throughout the album? It doesn't really, it doesn't really stop at all, does it? Um, I suppose not, and I, I think it, it's just a reflection of the way I was thinking, you know, and my drive and my my brain really didn't stop at all when I was trying to make it and neither did uh, the recording process you know it was very relentless and uh, I think it just ends up being reflected in the music and uh, this music glues together and begins you know what I started with Antichrist Superstar and uh, it enabled me to um, finally bring a close to the dream that I had of seeing myself in a position that I did on the Antichrist Superstar. It finally came to fruition and I was able to overcome that and uh, kind of uh, destroy everything I was and become something new. This, this record kind of represents a resurrection for me. Right. It's the completion of a trilogy, isn't it, this album? Yes. Um, there's also a book and a film, I believe, in the pipeline. How do they equate to the album? How do they relate to the album? Well, the, the book was something that um, started really coming into a real form during the three months of, of writing um, the lyrics. And there was a point where I considered uh, making it a film. In fact, as far back as Antichrist Superstar, I wanted to make the story into a film. Mm. But uh, I found that uh, the ironic part is uh, it's a story. Uh, the book is a work of fiction, but it sort of tells the same story as the three records. A story about someone fighting to fit into a world, realizing they don't belong there and starting a revolution 
the revolution be, then becomes um, uh, just another product, mm -hmm. which is what mechanical animals represented that element of the story. And then being faced with the choice of, uh, you know, destroying it all, which is Antichrist Superstar. And uh, the ironic part when I went to make the film was everyone who I met with were all interested in exploiting my name and making a very commercial yeah. movie. But they they really wanted to, they, in a sense, exploit my revolution by making it into a product that I didn't feel represented me. So I was much more proud to make an album and a book that I thought said things uncompromisingly. It must be virtually impossible to actually avoid that situation occurring, though, isn't it? Um, you need to take that into consideration. You need to understand uh, art and commerce, you know, do exist at the same time, mm. and you need to just try and stay true to what you do. Mm -hmm. You have to be very clever. You have to, in a sense, fool the system. You have to trick people into thinking they're getting what they want, but you're really giving them what you want.